Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to swatch the rest of my recent art haul. Part one was the new Rosa Gallery um, paints. And now that they are out of the way, we can do the second part. And I've got five Rembrandt paints here, one Roman Schmal, one Magello Mission Gold, and a Lyra Water Soluble Graphite Crayon. And what I usually do when I have new pan paints, I'll put them in the pan on camera because I find it quite interesting to see how the paints behave sometimes. And especially three of these Rembrandt paints and the cobalt uh, black from Magello, they're all granulating. So granulating paints tend to can sometimes have some blindness separation. And I always find that interesting to see on camera. This one doesn't look like it has any though. This is Rembrandt Cobalt Blue Deep PB36. And there's absolutely no binder separation here and it comes out very nicely and also doesn't seem to be super, I don't know about what I want, but it, like sinks down into the pan really nice and the pan really nicely so that's good. Let's add some water here in the swatch. I've used the stencil again to swatch out my to uh, sketch out or draw out my swatching area because I found that quite useful the last time. My swatches tend to get bigger the more I go on. So maybe this will help. And this is not exactly what I bought this um, stencil for, but it's an added bonus, I guess. So I only grabbed a little bit of paint there because I never know with paint straight from the tube how much paint you need. So I guess I'll get a little bit more. So we get a better value up here in mass tone. Then we spread it down a little bit more. And then I definitely want to add some water down here to see. It is supposed to be a granulating one, so I hope it granulates quite nicely. So the next one is Rembrandt Cerulean Blue Greenish, it's also PB36. I thought one of them was PB35 and one of them was PB36. And But I think I think they have a PB35 in their range as well, but this one and then the, P, and the other one is not supposed to be granulating or something like that. So I think this is why I got these two. There we are. I did have reasons for my choices, I just don't remember them right now. So again, no problem with binder separation. And the paint came out of the tube without having to be forced and it's settling into the pan quite nicely. That's always nice. I mean, they're definitely different in hue. This one, I think, is a bit closer to my Winsor Newton Cerulean Blue, which is a PB35. And then, but they're both, I think, just from memory, significantly different from, this is a bit closer to a rosa version, but it's bluer. It's like, it's definitely different. I think I need to do a cerulean blue comparison now that I have four different ones. Do I have four different ones or have I five? I can't remember. I think it's only four. It might be five. This one seems to be a bit stronger more tinting strength than the Cerulean Blue Deep, but I like them both. And let's hope we'll see some nice granulation there, because let's be honest, that's why I bought them. And then next one, we have a big tube that's 21 milliliters, I think, no, 20. Okay, I thought it was 21 for some reason. These here are 10 milliliters, which will last me a while. These are 20 milliliters, which will last me a longer while. <laughs> so and this one is Raw Sienna PY43. And this one is also a granulating one, and ooh, there's quite a lot stuck in the cap here, so I guess I'll 
been trying to use some of that to swatch and again no problem with binder separation by the looks of it and this is very liquid this just a would explain why there was so much stuck in the cap up there and yeah this is like settling down really nicely i'll put this maybe not in my swatch just put quite a lot out of the cap there i don't think i need all of that it's quite a bit of paint And I do hope we'll see some nice granulation in that. Because I do quite like the Winsor Newton version of Rosiana, which has a nice bit of gentle granulation, but the Winsor Newton ver version is a mixture of PY42 and PR101, I think. It's not a one pigment one, so I'm looking for one that's ideally just one pigment. And, I mean, it's a beautiful U. So, and then I also got the Rembrandt Gold Ochre, which is also PY43, but this is not supposed to be granulating. And I'll be honest, I do not quite remember my reasons for wanting to get this, especially now that I have the Rosa Golden Ochre, which is also PY43, I think. Oh, it's sitting right here, so I can check. No, it's PY42. Okay. But, yes, I did get that as well, so... This is the first one that doesn't just want to pour out of the tube, but now that it started coming out, there's actually no problem with it either. So I guess it'll be interesting to see how different they are. This one seems to be a bit deeper in color, but warmer. And I think less opacity, it seems more, it seems more transparent, but that would also kind of maybe track with this one being granulating and this one not being granulating. Because granulating paints tend to be a little bit less transparent than non-granulating ones. So, and then, this is kind of exciting, I got the Rembrandt Quinacridone Orange PO48. And PO48 is one of those pigments that are sadly discontinued because the automotive industry doesn't make orangey gold cars anymore. So we poor artists do not get to have all these lovely quinacridone oranges anymore. This seems to be a bit, I'm not sure if it's binder separation, but there's a bit of bubbling going on, but no, it doesn't actually look like the binder separating, it's just a paint. Oh, it's quite bubbly. Ooh, hang on. That's definitely not what I meant. Also, I need to make sure my brush is clean. But that's not a big deal, I think. I'm not gonna alter appearance of the U too much. So I'm really looking forward to this. See, it is it is kind of a shame that they're all going out of fashion because those are my favorite oranges. I'm much more likely, but on the other hand, I guess a lot of the PR101 burnt siennas aren't a million miles away from a quinacoron burnt orange. So, not exactly the same, but especially not in mass tone. But once you water them down a little bit, I think you can actually replace 
a PR101 burnt sienna for a PO48 quinacridone burnt orange or quinacridone orange. But yeah, so maybe maybe a quinacridone orange, discontinued quinacridone orange pigment video is also on the way. Because I've got the P in PO48 now, I already have PO49 quinacridone gold and PO47, which is a, uh, another quinacridone orange from Delamania. But yeah, this is lovely. It's going to be quite interesting to, interesting to see to mix these with the blues. So then, I was debating if I should actually swatch the Roman Schmal pan or if I should wait until I do all my other Roman Schmal paints. But I do actually, I'm actually quite cu curious about this one. This is um, October 2023, which was a special edition. It's a mixture of PV20 and PV23 and PBR7. And Arte Miranda, I think, is one of the few places where I can still get it. I, know, I think it's sold out at Jackson's. I'm sorry if everything just moved. My pad is developing a life of its own. And I mean, this is of course something that I could have tried to mix myself. I've got a few PBR7s knocking about, and I've got dioxazine violet. But as I said the other day, I can never say no to a special edition if I can get my hands on it. Which is kind of stupid, actually, because if they're special editions and they don't come back and you really like the paint, then... Well, I guess then you, you do have the option, while you still have the paint, to see how you can mix it yourself. But it's a lovely brown. It's really quite interesting. Dioxys in violet is not as strong in this one as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it's really quite interesting. And I can't remember if this was supposed to be granulating or not. But PBR7 can granulate, so let's see what we can see. That's actually really quite lovely. So, and then this one is my first Jello Mission Gold paint. And I've been wanting to try this ever since I saw it. Oh, there's a bit of binder separation going on, I think. Ever since I saw this on Lindsay the Frugal Crafter's channel a while back. And... Let's see if I can add a little bit more. Oh, now I've got plenty of pigment on my brush and I have not put any water in, so I'll add plenty of water down there in a second. But then my jello paints are not really known for their flow, wet on wet, are they? But yes, ever since I've first seen this swatched, I thought, ooh, this looks delicious, I want to have this. Because I had quite a bit of granulation. And seems to be quite a cool black as well and I really want to experiment more with my granulating blacks all the different granulating blacks that I have now and oh, now I've added another another one in there and see what different things mixes I can make with these Up there in mass tone, it's really, really dark. It's really nice. I mean, I guess we'll see once it's dry how the opacity really is. It's always difficult to tell when it's still wet. So let's get quite a bit of water in here as well because I want to see how much this granulates. Very nice. Mm, maybe I overdid it again a bit with the water there. But I've got so much pigment up here, I can just Pull some back down again, hopefully. Right, 
right? And then if you follow me on Instagram, you will maybe have seen my recent 100 day project paintings where I've used quite a bit of water soluble graphite, the Faber Castell graphite pencils that I've shown you in one of the, 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 the other art hall, not the one with the Rosa paints and these ones, but the one with Lindsay's stencils and the Schmincke paints. And I had the Faber Castell water soluble graphite pencil set in there as well. And so I've used that quite a bit recently. And so, because I think I was just shy of the free delivery or something, or I don't know, maybe I wasn't. But I thought I want like a big chunky stick like that. That's a bit more manageable than the Derwent Graffitant XL blocks though, because this one but the crayon shape is maybe a bit more manageable for just going right into into paintings and to add some marks. And what I've been doing quite a bit is I've I've painted some of my elements in and then before the paint was completely dry I went in with the graphite pencils and then they melt into the paint a little bit and go darker than if you just go over over dry over dry paint. And I really, really actually like the effect. So I'm, and look at that, look how dark that gets. So that's another thing that I want to do more of my experimentations with my water soluble graphite. And I think I leave this bit up here as it is. And then let's see what happens if I go in here on the white paper and add a bit more and yes look that gets much darker this is this is gonna be fun i'm kind of proud of myself that i managed to limit myself to just one of them they had there's a 9b version of this one as well which would be even darker but unfortunately they were out of that so i went with the 6b which was the next next darkest and then i think there's a 2B and a 4B, maybe? I can't quite remember what the what the hardness or softness grades were. But if they're back, if the 9B1 is back in stock the next one time I get to order from Arte Miranda, I will definitely, I will probably be getting that as well. But yeah, this is going to last me quite a while though uh, as well because this is all just pure graphite, so. But yes, I can, cannot wait to start playing around with that a little bit as well. So, okay, let's give these all some time to dry properly and then I can hold them up. Oh, but look, I can already see how much this granulates. This is exciting. But yes, let them dry, then I hold them up and we'll have some final thoughts. The swatches are dry and I'm going to see how high I can hold them up. So you can take a proper look at them. I do really like the Rembrandt Cerulean Blue Deep. That's a lovely, it's a lovely hue and there's not massive granulation, but there's certainly some granulation there. So this is definitely, I think I bought this one for my super granulating mixing palette. So this will definitely find a place in there, I think. And I don't see quite as much granulation in the cerulean blue greenish. And quite honestly, the cerulean blue deep seems much greener to me than the cerulean blue greenish, to be honest. Ah, well, who am I to argue? But there is, there is some granulation there definitely as well. And I will have to play around with it in mixes. I bought these mainly for mixing anyway, so. We'll see. We'll see how they go. The Rembrandt Raw Sienna also has some nice gentle granulation. And I think I'll uh, go and compare that to the Windsor Newton version. But just from, from memory, it looks fairly similar. And so I think once I run out of the um, Windsor Newton Raw Sienna tube that I have, and it's currently in my professional palette, I will probably replace it with the Rembrandt because the Rembrandt is cheaper. Then the gold ochre is also, it's a, it's a lovely hue. 
So maybe maybe that's just maybe just it an appeal to me, and so that's why I bought it. I really don't remember why, but it's lovely. And again, not quite sure in what part this is going to go quite yet, but I will have to have a serious look at all my palettes and see what I can do with how I can change them up. Then, as I said, the Rembrandt Quinn Orange is really quite lovely, but I think I do need to go and compare it to my Winsor Newton Burnt Sienna and my Rosa Gallery Burnt Sienna. They are both PO 101 from the top of my head, and I don't know if I have any others. I think the Schmincke Transparent Ox Red Oxide or Transparent Sienna, whatever its name is, is also a PO 101. So there's another comparison that might be coming up. Then the Roman Schmal October 2023 has a little bit of granulation as I expected and it really now that it's dry it's even even more surprising of, of a you. I think I will have to play around with my PR, PBR sevens and see if I can mix something similar um, that comes close to it because it's really lovely. I do really like this one. I like it more than I thought it would so that's a bonus. <laughs> and then the Magello Mission Gold Cobalt Black is wow look at that granulation. I mean that's just amazing. So that's that's another thing that is definitely coming up soon as well. Me playing around with all my granulating blacks and seeing how they behave in mixes. That's going to be quite exciting, I think. Well, I think it's going to be exciting. I hope you agree. And then I'm really happy with the Lyra graphite, water soluble graphite stick here as well. That's going to come in handy for my for my 100 day project paintings at the moment, I think because you can get some really dark values in with that and it dissolves nicely and here in the dissolve but you can see that it has like this this graphite granulation to it as well that I've already seen in the Derwent graphitint not so much in the XL blocks I think but certainly in the paints so that's all it's all very exciting and at the moment I don't know where they will all go but they will all find places and I will be playing around with them so thank you very much for joining me today. Let me know what your favorite paint of these eight ones is and which ones you are quite exciting, to, um, which are you excited about to see in mixes coming up soon. And please give the video a like, consider subscribing to my channel and all that. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye bye now. Bye.